okay, so um, exercise 1B has also got quite a few things that are recapping from year one. And actually, we knew about multiplying and dividing complex numbers from year one as well. This is some of the stuff we should have known from that first year. So if you have a complex number Z1 that looks like this and a complex number Z2 that looks like this, if you multiply those complex numbers, you multiply the moduli and you add the arguments together. If you divide them, you divide the moduli and you subtract the arguments. So I've just written that here. If you multiply two complex numbers, you multiply the moduli and add the arguments. If you divide them, you divide the moduli and subtract the arguments. You will have come across that in year one. Just wanted to show you that this also works now that you have it in this exponential form. But it seems to make a bit more sense when you see it in exponential form. So if we have these two complex numbers here and here, well, when you multiply them together, of course, these are just going to multiply. And obviously, when you have two powers that are being multiplied, you add the powers, which is why the arguments are being added here. And similarly, when you're dividing two numbers, obviously you would divide these, R1 divided by R2. And if I was gonna do um, theta one divided by, sorry, e to the i theta one divided by e to the i theta two, well, you know that you would be subtracting the powers with our index laws. And again, you get the same results of the uh, arguments being subtracted. So nothing really new here, apart from the fact of this exponential form that we've got. So we're going to try and work out what this first one here is. OK, things that we want to identify. We know the value of R in both of them. So I know that they are just going to multiply the modulus. And I've also got the arguments. I've got 5 pi over 12 and pi over 12. So I'm just going to actually add together those arguments. So that's 5 pi over 12 plus pi over 12 plus i sine 5 pi over 12 plus pi over 12. So that is 12 cos of 6 pi over 12, which is just pi over 2, plus i sine pi over 2. Now, hopefully you know that uh, cos of pi over 2 is just 0. So this is just 12i sine pi over 2. And hopefully you also know that sine pi over 2 is 1. So this whole thing is just equal to 12i. Okay, I'll just quickly show you that though. You should know this, that sine of pi over 2 is obviously 1 and cos pi over 2 is 0, hence us coming up with 12i here. So this one we want to write in the form r e to the i theta. Well, we've identified what the values of r are going to be. So we have 2 divided by root 2. I don't know why I'm doing this in the calculator. It's obviously going to be root 2 is the answer. And then we've got uh, the arguments. So this time the argument for cosine would be pi over 12 subtract 5 pi over 6 because of the division. And it's going to be the same for sine, which is just going to be pi over 12 minus 5 pi over 6. So we have root 2. Now I'm not going to do pi over 12. I'm just going to do a 12th minus 5 6, which is minus 3 over 4. So that's the cos of minus 3 pi over 4 plus i sine of minus 3 pi over 4. And to finish that off and get it into the exponential form, it is going to be root 2 e to the minus 3 pi i over 4. OK, it just kind of collapses down where you have the value of the modulus and then of the argument. OK, we're going to look at a slightly different kind of question here. And this time we have something that is a little bit of a problem. And it's this thing that we've got here, because that's not the usual form. But I've said here, as a reminder, and it's to do with the functions being odd and even, that cos theta minus i sine theta can be written as cos of minus theta plus i sine of minus theta. And that's because cos theta is the same as cos of minus theta. And i sine theta, sorry, minus i sine theta and plus i sine minus theta are odd functions, so they are also equal to each other. So I'm going to rewrite the second function. To begin with, let's get out of this red pen. I have 2 cos of pi over 15 plus i sine pi over 15 multiplied by 3 cos of minus 2 pi over 5 plus i sine of minus 2 pi over 5. So I can multiply together the 2 and 3 to get 6. 
I'm then going to ask that we have cos of pi over 15 plus the negative 2 pi over 5. Same thing for sine. And I'm just going to do 1 over 15 minus 2 over 5, which is minus pi over 3. So I'm just going to say that 6e to the minus pi over 3i. I decided to put an exponential form just because it seems to be a bit of a quicker way of writing that. Obviously, if they asked for it in the modulus argument form, you would have written it as 6 cos of minus pi over 3 plus i sine of minus pi over 3. And if they wanted you to write that um, so that it didn't have a negative argument, you could have said that it is 6 cos of pi over 3, because they're the same, minus i sine of pi over 3, because those second bits are the same. So all of those lines there show equivalent statements. OK, so there's an exam style question here that we can have a quick look at. Um, and then you're going to be able to do enough of exercise 1b. So you might like to pause the video, have a go at this. Um, I'm going to go through this one in just a second. So nice and easy, part A of the question says find the modulus of z. So the modulus of z is just going to be the square root of 5 root 3 squared plus oops, 5 squared. Well, 5 root 3 squared is 75, 5 squared is 25. So the answer to this is that the modulus of z is 10. I always like to do a sketch for this next bit. So we have that z is 5 root 3 minus 5i. So clearly the argument is going to be negative. And to find this angle that I've got here, I will do the inverse tan of the opposite, which is 5, divided by the adjacent, which is 5 root 3, which is just pi over 6. So theta is pi over 6. So the argument of z is pi over 6. I wonder if I've got these there. I might not be able to zoom in on that, unfortunately. Then we've been given a different complex number this time, which is w. And w is 2 cos pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4. They've given it into our in this modulus argument form that we've got. So what we're going to do is find the modulus of w divided by the modulus of z. Well, that's going to be pretty easy because it is just going to be the modulus of w divided by the modulus of z. The modulus of w is 2 and the modulus of z is 10. So the answer to this bit is a fifth or 0 0.2. It then wants us to find the argument, this perhaps hasn't been typed properly, the argument of w divided by z. It should be like this. It's the argument of w divided by z. We know that's the argument of w subtract the argument of z. Well, the argument of w is clearly pi over 4, and the argument of z is pi over 6. So it's pi over 4 subtract pi over 6. Being very lazy here, 1 over 4 minus 1 over 6 is 1 over 12. So the argument of w over z is pi over 12. And that should be enough work to be able to get you on with exercise 1b. Okay.